Foot Clan, we have such a good mailbag episode. You guys came with great questions. Dynasty, redraft, who gets thrown out of the boat. You don't want to miss today's episode. Foot Clan, just nine days left before March 1st. At least. I thought it was eight, Andy. It's no. a leap year. <laughs> is it a leap year? Who knows? There is uh, between eight and nine days left before March 1st. And where are we leaping? Here's what I wanted to let the Foot Clan know. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, uh, for that intro. You've got a limited amount of time left to get to ultimatedraftkit.com and get in on our pre-order special extravaganza thing. Okay? Basically, you get it at the lowest possible price, and you get a chance to become the first Listener League entry. We're going to give away a spot into the Listener League. If you pre-order by March 1st, you get a chance at that. You get a bunch of cool perks. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you. I'm Andy Holloway, joined... As always, by my two best friends, oh, Jason oh. Moore. Thanks, bud. That's my bit. And Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Hello. <laughs> Mike What's has been drinking, apparently. Yeah, I've been drinking the gym, working out I like mean, a beast. First, you came in and you're like, oh, can we get the air on in here? I'm yes. I'm burning up. Then, then it was, what are we leaping to? What's leap here? And then, uh, then, then there's that. So... It's your bit, Mike. You can keep the best friend bit. I'm I'm just here. I'm the spice. Well, we'll find out what you are. Marco Marco Polo was looking for me. Marco Polo, well, who, the original Marco Polo. Yes. Can he we was, not, not the pool game? Can you mute him, Jason? I have Do you no, have any idea what he no said power. for the last like five I have minutes? No power. This would be a Brooks only uh, <laughs> mutability. Never. Thursday, Thursday, February twentieth. It is the preseason. We have a mailbag show today. We also have, uh, in this time of year, it's a little less intense. We don't got games going on. And so we have the opportunity to, uh, I wanted to do a little trust exercise this morning. So I threw some questions up on Twitter. Now, did either of you two gentlemen, see, don't go over there. I've already seen them. You've already seen them. Yes. Mm, okay. Well, what that's fine. <laughs> I apologize. I thought you were working out this morning, I was, Mike. But I'm so sorry so, that, that I look at our social media. Yeah, well, I'm, I was surprised they All went right. up this morning, and I don't have the results. I just told Brooks that I threw some questions up mm. because I wanted to pull the Foot Clan, and I was curious. And and Brooks is an option in all of these polls, by the way. And uh, I asked five questions, and the Foot Clan decided who they would pick in these situations. And so the first one that I put up, I said, "Look." Foot Clan, you're in the cockpit of a fighter jet. Mm -hmm. Who do you want as your co-pilot? And they can choose Jason. They should have chose me. And Jason's made it very clear before. I can land a plane. He can land. What did you put your odds at? I think it was 75%. 75%. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just Maybe a little low. I can tell you who I voted for. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? I voted for Jason. Yeah. Because you. So you want him in the cockpit with you? I, because the chance of me passing out... From G Force, very hundred percent, very very high. And I, you're very similar to me. Okay. In when it comes to like coasters and those types of things, I think your chance of passing out also very high. So you're looking at you just want a, a warm body. I just want someone who will be conscious. Okay. Yeah. So could, that's I'll, why I went with. And, now Brooks was an option. Yeah, Brooks is is was not an option. Okay. What is the result <laughs> of that? What was the result of that poll? Who and, did the Foot Clan want? Andy's the winner with thirty two. Oh, you're all dead. Yeah, they didn't take. <laughs> What's into the account? percentage? <laughs> 32% for Andy. Now, yeah. Brooks, what was your percentage? I'm 26, and Mike is 24. Oh, oh that you're all dead, too. Yeah. I you picked the wrong, <laughs> the wrong pilot. I would have picked Brooks myself. I just feel like, you know, you're a pretty calm dude, and I think I'm going to need a calm mind back there. Jason would be screaming. He's down at 16%. Oh, I would oh. be screaming on the runway after I'm out of the plane, and it would sound like, you see that? I did it. I know you would. Jason would be up in the plane, and he would pull the eject button. 
Oh, <laughs> yes, I would. Right when you need... Sucker! Jason, give me a hand. <laughs> He's gone. Number two, it's time to pick a godparent. Mm. Who did the Foot Clan choose between the four of us to be the godparent of their children? Foot Clan went with Jason on this one with 41%. Mm. What? Ooh. Yeah, look... Oh, uh, for, for maybe they think you're like a Santa. Figure. Yeah, You'll exactly. give good presents. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> who is the least... jolly dad. Who is the least godparent? Totally makes sense. That's me with 8%. Oh, I figured it was me. I feel like that's fair because we have children and you don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's a good point. I forgot. (laughs) Mike's like, yeah, I'd be all right. (laughs) All right. Oh, yeah, I'd be better than Brooks. (laughs) You're stuck in an abandoned prison. Zombies are on the loose. Who do you want with you in that situation? That's that's, that's Mike. That's me. Yeah, that's... I want myself. Yeah, Mike dominated this one. Wait, what was the vote? Uh, 53% to Mike. <laughs> yes. What was the next You're highest? You're all living. Is it Jason? Jason, 21. Yeah. yeah. I've got I would have chosen Jason. I, I mean. I want those zombies distracted for the longest amount of time. Yeah, they've got a lot mm. to eat. <laughs> um, and I'm just just speaking of brains, of course. I've got so so many. Very intelligent. So many brains. Uh, <laughs> right. That's that's. What did you think I meant? No, that's uh, we were in sync. All right, you are under, or I'm sorry, you're lost at sea, you're adrift, you're desperate. Who do you want to help navigate the way home? You. Me? Ooh. See, I picked, my, I picked you, myself. You picked yourself. Yeah. You have. You said you have a good sense of direction. I do. Yeah, I guess No one I, wants Brooks in this situation? I would be fine with any of you, just not me. That's not a me thing. <laughs> See, where I think it would be good to have Brooks is because we'd be like, oh, man, we're stuck in this raft, and Brooks will say, "Well, good thing I have this backpack with three months of supplies." Yeah. That's true. That you didn't know I had. It should be Brooks. And then it, did you win Brooks. that one, Brooks? It's real close between you and me, Andy. Okay, you got thirty-five percent. I'm at thirty-three percent. And then we easily oh. overpower him, and now I Brooks have six is, months of supplies. Absolutely, Brooks is out of this raft <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and and we've got his backpack, and we're gonna be good. You want his preparation, not his company. Uh, I just don't <laughs> want his appetite um, oh to God. also have to f- feed. All right, this is the last one that I came up with. Have you seen any of these, Jason? I saw them post. Okay, I don't know. You're the under results. the you're under the knife. Midway through surgery, the surgeon has to hand off for the most important part. Oh mm. Who is he handing the tools to? Who's got the steadiest hand? I feel like Mike. I mean, you're a guitarist. You've got this finesse, right? Yeah. The the hard part is you could totally repair I, my I, heart. I, I I think I have real good like it, I don't even know what you would call that, but like minute dexterity. Dex, yeah, dexterity. That's a good okay. word. Fine motor skills. Yes. Thank, thank you. you, Owl Borland, jumping in here. He's just mad he wasn't in the polls. But yeah. Yeah. Dexterity and and but I got a little. My hands are a little shaky. So uh, I, don't know. I was going to say you can't have shaky hands. I know that I am and should be last in this. <laughs> Like that, I know. There's no way you want me because of he so pulls the eject button. So many reasons. First of all, I'm squeamish. I'm just cutting it and getting out. Like you, you guys pass out because of the G force. I'm all about that. Give give me the G. I see that scalpel right. go in. I'm good night. I'm out. I'm on the floor. Who was it, bro? Is it you, Brooks? Well, I'll start with uh, last place is a okay. tie between Mike and Jason at eight percent. Eight percent. Nobody yep. wants. Yeah. High five. So if it, people would rather have one of us than both of them together helping out. <laughs> that is accurate, yeah. And the people are wise. And, uh, okay. Andy, you're the winner, 47%. All right. All right. That means I can they, they that means you the murder surgery. is going to be on you. That's, That's what true. that means because you're still not going to succeed. Yeah, uh, it's, which of us can live with the burden knowing that we have <laughs> killed our friend? Who can best cope <laughs> with the guilt? We should have picked Brooks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because he's going to die in the water anyways <laughs> out of the raft. Brooks, are you? let me ask you one question. We actually have some fantasy football news to talk about. Before we get into that, though, are you happy I included you on this poll, or are you sad now that you've been thrown off of the boat? I'm honored. Okay. To be thrown off that boat. Yeah. <laughs> I, that I was on the boat to begin with. Yes. I thought that there was a chance that by including you, you would be chosen in all regards for all of these options. Mm. That people just feel they took it serious. Trustworthy. They thought about these questions. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. By the way, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Stay uh, up to date with the latest fantasy football news, notes, information. We got free agency on the way. We're going to do a little bit of uh, free agency wishing well on the next episode. Talk about some players and where we 
maybe hope that they land. But let's start with the news. Drew Brees. He's back. He's announced on Instagram. He's on Instagram like you, Jason. Very oh. hip. Very hip of Drew Brees. He will return for the 2020 season. Well, the Taysom Hill as the franchise quarterback era was short and fun. But yes, Drew Brees is back. He comes already with a massive uh, cap hit. And that's r before the contract they need to work out. Um, but obviously, this is good for the Saints. Good for your Michael Thomas shares. Good for Drew Brees. Good for everything there. Do they need to work something out? Um, I, is there like a restructuring that has to happen? Yeah, I don't know if they uh, – I, I think they do need to work something out. But I, okay. I could be wrong there because his situation was weird already where it said he was on the books for 20 years. He, he was a free agent. agent. Yeah, he was a free agent because he, he would be in those lists of, of, you know, best possible free agents for the year because um, he, he signed a deal in 2018. Right. Drew Brees uh, back for another season. Taysom Hill likely to get a first or second round tender from the Saints. So that would mean that – if a team wanted to make Taysom Hill an offer, that they would have to give up either a first or a second round pick to the Saints, and the Saints would have an option to match. Now, obviously, if somebody made him an offer that was respective of a starting quarterback, you know, 20 plus million per year, the Saints aren't likely to match that offer, but it's also very unlikely that a team is going to go out and make Taysom Hill their starter. No, nobody is. Not, no. in, the, not in literally the only year of the last like 40 years where there are legitimately several free agent quarterbacks that are good they're not going to go out there and be like oh i could you know take a shot on Jameis winston or philip rivers or, how about this Taysom hill guy it, it also even if no one was available Taysom hill has completed what do we got here uh six passes <laughs> in his career and he's going to be 30 years old in august like it's it's just not happening for the saints 100 percent it's worth it even if even the money they will have to pay him if they give him a first-round tender, he's very valuable to this offense. He is a thorn in the butt cheeks of fantasy football players everywhere, but he's great for the team. And then Teddy Bridgewater will very likely be out the door as well, so Taysom would be their backup. Bridgewater expected to have a strong market, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. Could see upwards of $30 million per year. I mean, is, is, that I, a, is that a situation that you want yourself in as a franchise? Is no, Teddy Bridgewater no. a Teddy? Teddy is good, but I, I I don't see him getting thirty. Teddy greater sign Mitch. Oh yes, yes. I, that's such a dumb question for me to bring up on this show. <laughs> what a stupid example that I bring now, forth. If you're there was a team that needed Taysom Hill, yes. it's the Chicago Bears. That team would improve immediately on the six passes thrown by Taysom Hill. No completions. He's throwing the ball. I'm no longer times. going to compare anybody to Mitch because I know what your choice will be. <laughs> but Teddy Bridgewater could get a deal. Like you said, there are many options out there on free agency right now. Here was some big news. It was rumored last week. Greg Olson, a one year, $7 million contract with the Seattle Seahawks. Mm. That is not great news for the ceiling of Montana Strong, mm -hmm. Will Disley. Uh, I am. You want me so to pour sorry. one out for him? If we got a chance to play it, we play it. <laughs> Big Montana, Will Disley. He's saying, "Hey, Greg, come be my friend." But for fantasy, you think Greg? You think Greg Olson has anything left to to offer? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I I do think he has something left to offer. I think he's uh, a decent tight end right now. He's g still. Quality as far as well-rounded, a, a decent run blocker. He can go out and catch some passes. I don't think that he is going to be, uh, even with Russell Wilson, and we, we saw what he was able to do with Disley, even with Hollister, I, I don't see Greg Olson as being this top eight tight end anymore, but he's going to go out there and get four or five touchdowns and uh, you know 500 yards. Are you factoring in that he plays Arizona twice? Oh, tight end one. So Unless you're Evan, Evan Ingram. <laughs> yeah. Those things turn over. And the thing that's strange about Olsen going to Seattle for one year, and then you have talk right now about, you know, Jason Witten might not be back with the Cowboys. And he could – he's not talking about retirement either. Like, Greg Olsen was rumored to go to the broadcast booth. Jason Witten's already been there. But he's talking about maybe playing somewhere else. It would be just very strange to see Olsen and Witten with one more kind of – 
sad year. There was a question from Instagram wondering, how do we come up with the big Montana nickname for Will Disley? Isn't he's from Montana. He's, he's from he's from Bozeman. Yes. And so he was like their player of the year up there. Yeah. And, and there's only a few players up there. But he's he was from Montana. Yeah. And he's big. And he's strong. <laughs> like it's it's not very complicated. Did, hey guys, we, did we come up with that? We yes. did we did come up with that. Because that auto completes on Google now. Well, right, because we Will are, Disley, Big Montana auto Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. I thought when I auto completed that on. maybe we had taken that from like a high school coach nickname or no, something. No, do you remember what his nickname was? Like he has he had an official nickname. We rebranded him Big Montana. But without looking it up, do either of you remember? Big Will? It's Uncle Will. Uncle Will. <laughs> so we improved that You're nickname. Darn right we did. I hope he I still think that there's a potential that he comes back and is is a factor in the future, but uh, well, not next year. He's coming off a torn Achilles. Also, basically the first result, or the first or second result, if you search Will Disley Big Montana, is a Reddit thread entitled, Will Disley, a.k.a. Big Montana, Kyo! <laughs> <laughs> Making our mark in the fantasy <laughs> industry once again. You are welcome, America. Yes. Foot Clan, you are strong. <laughs> yes, you are mighty. <laughs> Undefeated. The Redskins have exercised Adrian Peterson's 2020 option. He will be back with Washington. This is not a surprise. He was uh, valuable to that team last year, and he, at a minimum, provides great insurance for you know, the hopeful Darius Geis uh, fans. Yeah, well, from my understanding, they are looking at working uh, a, a veteran minimum contract through the year 2030. Uh, they believe that he <laughs> for could Peterson just, For Peterson, he could play into his 50s. Based and on the I knowledge I have of his financial situation, he needs a contract through 2030. Yeah. Uh, which is sad. Yes. All right. There was a report. Is it worth talking about, the Tom Brady report? Uh, Larry Fitzgerald Sr., who is a longtime reporter, not generally breaking news, he did, he did report this past week that the Raiders are preparing to offer Brady a two-year $60 million contract. Obviously, anybody can offer Tom Brady a contract. He's a free agent. And I think people will. I mean, if they're interested, they're that's the, that's the starting point. To, I mean, two years, sixty million. That's not an outlandish contract. That's like right. The, we what did you just say about Teddy Bridgewater? Like thirty million a year. That you want Teddy Bridgewater or Tom Brady? Even at this age, I think it's the years that will be the interesting part for the Brady signing, because it leverages the Patriots. It puts them in a tough position where do you, do you give them a two year guaranteed contract for a player of that age? I yeah, he doesn't two get, years. They don't get to right. go year to year. Two is years all, is all I'm right. saying. Yeah. When you're when you're 42 and a half, two years that's risky business. It is. Uh, the Cardinals. It's been reported that they do want to keep Kenyon Drake. The franchise tag would be an option. Oh, I don't. Goodness. I don't believe that report. I don't either. I I was going to say this is this is something where you 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 throw out a comment of like maybe they could franchise tag him and then it's being reported oh that could be an option that is it, it's virtually uh, an impossibility just roster construction wise money that's already invested in David Johnson maybe if they were able to find someone to take on the salary then that could be an option. In the meantime, while they said they're not going to cut David Johnson, it would literally cost them more money if they cut him than if they keep him. So there, th there's no way that they cut him, and I agree. They're not franchising Kid You Drake, but the point is they want Drake. They want to sign him and have him be a Cardinal. Absolutely. And then uh, good news, Big Ben expected to be ready for week one. At least that's what Mike Tomlin said on ESPN's first take. There was a report also about the – uh, Jaguars not a lock to pick up Leonard Fournette's fifth year option. That's a ten point one million dollar hit. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it makes sense. And there's no dead cap hit with him, right? They can just let him go. Yeah, well, yes, because of, of that when, situation. When they ch when they changed the contract back when he was suspended by Tom Coughlin, his was well, his guaranteed money went away. Yeah, I I think if they if they were to try to get rid of the guarantee, like actually capitalize on no guaranteed, the NFLPA would come after him. He'll be back this year. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to let him go. Ron Rivera confirms Jordan Reed remains in the concussion protocol. Good grief, That's man. That's not the kind of report that you're used to seeing in February, but Jordan Reed has had just a storied history of concussion issues. 
I don't understand why he would want to risk playing again, much he, less the Redskins take another shot on him. I hope he remains in the league's concussion protocol next February as well and forever and never is allowed to play football again for his own sake. We loved Jordan Reed, Rule 86. He is He's awesome. in the Hall of He's Fame 29 of our nicknames. He's 29 years old. He's 29. But, no, he, he should not. You know, you have that that many of the injuries. You call, call it a career. All right, any other bits of news that you guys want to talk about? Nope. We, we good to get into the mailbag? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, we have some voicemail questions today as well. You can send your questions in, 302-464-TFFB. You can also submit them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Just click the Submit a Question button. We want to help you out. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hey, ballers. This is uh, Jacob out in Vegas. If you had to write, produce, and sing on a duet album with any current NFL player, who would it be and why? Mm. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, Hard-hitting. This is easy for me. <laughs> oh, it's easy. It's very easy. There's there's three players that come to mind. Two are absolute no's. Okay. I, I'm not. I, look, I've seen enough of Love Bell and Antonio Brown's uh, okay musical out prowess mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not right. Stick to football. Right. But their former teammate Juju. Oh come on. Me and Juju. Yeah, it would be would, it would be excellent. Look, th they made a movie called The Star Is Born about. A team. A duet. A, a duet. And that would be me and my man Juju. Are you Lady Gaga in that situation? You're darn right I am. Okay. <laughs> I can't I can't pull off the Bradley Cooper. That's got to be Juju. <laughs> well, I think clearly my choice uh, has been brought forth in the last couple of days. I didn't realize this man was such a lyricist. But, um, look, me and Stefan Diggs, we could take oh. care of things. Life's too short, man. That's a great call. Can we, go, we can go with that one. Um Always got an ace up my sleeve for whatever was dealt. That's another good line. Are these just like song titles that he's thrown out? Things getting is interesting. Oh, yeah. These are his tweets. J oh, uh, I, thought that, I thought this was the track list. Maybe this is his album. That's everybody, what it is. Everybody go through something. It's all about perseverance. Everybody's I mean, thinking he's vague booking. No, no. He's, he's promoting his future <laughs> album. The new uh, Everything That Was Done in the Dark is about to come to light. I, I'm going to love that track. There's a lot of talk about Stefan Diggs getting traded, guys. Yeah, apparently he removed all the Vikings stuff from his Instagram because this is how we handle things as adults now. He's, if, still, he's still got Vikings things on Twitter, though. Ooh, that means there's a hope. He hasn't, he hasn't wiped it all clean. If but, Stephon <laughs> Diggs was traded, I'm just throwing this out there right now, I will be way too high on Adam Thielen. And by that, I fair. mean I will be appropriately high. I'm it's all, fair. I'll be all in. To answer the question for me, though, I'm going with J.J. Watt because – He's got star power. I think he can bring people in. Like, Interesting. They're going to listen, but I'm going to look awesome because he's going to be on that track, and he's going to look – he'll be so terrible of whatever. Oh, like whatever, dancing. Just whatever, any, anything in music. I can't imagine that J.J. Watt has musical abilities, and so <laughs> I'm just trying body. to look good. You might look less buff, though. Yeah. Well, look, that I'll, I'll look 10% less buff. I get it. He's a little bit stronger than me. Here's the thing about that, though. Little bit. What NFL player is going to make us not look less buff? I've Kick kickers, <laughs> kickers. What? Ooh, some should have gone like. Uh... Oh, he's retired now. All the kickers that wear just the one single face mask. Do, does anybody do that anymore? Neil well, Rackers. like Tom Tupa. Yeah, <laughs> going back to the '90s. All right, uh, we have uh, another voicemail question. What up, ballers? This is Daniel from Cleveland, Ohio. I want to know who you'd rather own in a dynasty league right now, Odell or DJ Moore? Wow. Shout out to my friend Justin, who just got engaged. Oh, he congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, it's Wait. Odell Beckham, and it's it's not close for me. <sighs> the DJ Moore breakout, I believe 100% it was real. Like, I loved it. Loved him coming out of uh, of college. Didn't so much love the landing spot. I mean, you do have a retooling, but man, 135 targets, almost 1,200 yards last He's year. 22 years old. So DJ 22? Moore is five years younger than Odell Beckham, who just basically played most of the season and wasn't very right. good. Uh, obviously, you've got the uh, surgery that that Odell Beckham 
did he did he get that already? He was saying you should have got it through the year. Uh, obviously, struggle struggles with Baker Mayfield. I had a question come in very, very, very similar of Odell Beckham versus Juju, and saying who right. do you want in Dynasty? It's it's a it's a really tough question for me because Odell Beckham carries an enormous name, but is he going to get back to that name production wise? He's only twenty seven years old, which for a wide receiver, still young. And I think you're not going to go wrong either way. If I had to pick here, I would probably order them. I, I would take Odell over over DJ Moore. But this it is very year, close for me. This year in redraft, will you, would you rather have DJ Moore or Odell at this point? I mean, we're very early. but Because of the quarterback situation for Carolina, I will take Odell Beckham. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Dynasty trade question from Yanni in New York. Would you trade Ezekiel Elliott for Josh Jacobs? and the first pick in the 2020 rookie draft in a dynasty league? Or would you ask for more? Thanks, love the podcast. Wait, you can trade Zeke? You can get it, get Jacobs and the number one pick? And the number one pick. Yeah, easy. Smash. That's yeah. a big yes I for I wish you. I had a button. Yeah, it's an it's a easy yes for me as well. I love Zeke as far as, you know, he's, he's got the body type where I think he's going to have a longer career for a running back, but we but he's think still that. a running back, and though they fall off a cliff quick, you can replace him with the first pick in the 2020 draft or Josh Jacobs. All right, Ross uh, from the UK has a question for us. Bonjour. <laughs> somehow, it, somehow <laughs> it hit fresh, Mike. Uh, hey, ballers, I am a Cowboys fan from the UK. I'll be coming over to New York in December this year. While I'm in the U.S., I'd like to get to a Dallas road game if the dates match up. My question is this. Is it acceptable for me to wear Cowboys colors when visiting mm. a home stadium of, oh, let's say the Eagles or the Giants? Mm. Love the podcast. Wants to know the etiquette. I feel like, Jason, you have a very – you have an interesting etiquette story for the road jersey. Uh, well, so, I mean, I've, I've had a couple experiences. I feel like once I, I was going to a Phoenix Suns game in uh, Los Angeles, this was a playoff game. We, the, the Suns, basketball team. Yes, correct. The basketball team. We, the Phoenix Suns, won the game in exciting fashion, and I felt like I almost died leaving that game. <laughs> I certainly wish I did not have the jersey on it, so I'm going to say. Did you remove the jersey on the way out of the building? I did not. I okay. should have. Okay. Um, I mean, you're talking things, planter, like there's big planters leaving, the, people grabbing like roots and rocks and throwing them. Yikes. They were not happy about losing, losers. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I think this comes down to the fan base. So like Philly. Okay, so Philly. Philly, I'm not Are wearing, you going into Philly with I, mm -mm. opposing colors? Mm -mm. No, I'm not. Now, the, here's the, his one advantage. I'm assuming he has an English accent. Oh, yeah. That's gonna score it's very you points. Charming. That's gonna score you points. Nobody's gonna be. They're gonna be like, okay, this guy's fine. We get it. He doesn't know football. He's from across the pond. So I, I think that's an advantage. But I wouldn't. I still wouldn't do it in Philly. Save what about your, New save York? yourself? Yeah, New York. I'm. You're fine. fine? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's acceptable. One hundred percent. It should not be a problem to go to an, a, an opposing stadium wear your team's jersey. Like it shouldn't be a problem. And I would say. The vast majority of the time, it's not a problem. Yeah, you got the Raiders, the Eagles. Oh yeah, I would, I would not do it. <laughs> that's Raiders. about that's like end of list. That those two teams. It's trouble going to an Arizona game against the Raiders wearing an own an Arizona jersey. It's true in Arizona. Yeah, can't do that. They're rambunctious. No, I them I, Raiders fans. I hide my fandom at the home game with the Raiders <laughs> fans. Go Raiders! <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Uh, by the way, we did have an official answer from a, an Eagles fan. Ketron wanted to jump in. He said, you can, but if you start talking smack, you death will come to him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you that's, go. That's a uh, scary situation. Just bring a, bring a shirt for the way out. Put, a, put another shirt over the top. Robert on Twitter says, who is the second best Batman after, of course, Michael Keaton? That's easy. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Yep. Christian Bale might be the best Batman. No, 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 hey, no, no, no. That's rude. With no, you see, I love Michael Keaton. I love Michael Keaton as well. Christian Bale is the right answer. Yep. What if he's eliminated? Is there what? Put him in order. The next. Batman. Then I will take Adam West. Okay. Oh, get You're out! You're not willing of to here. go Val Kilmer. No, Adam West. Thank the old the old Batmans are actually. Excellent. I feel like Val Kilmer was submarine by 
everything surrounding him. Yeah, it really movie. was because he wasn't. Are I don't you guys feel like he was taping for Val Kilmer as Batman. There was a period of time when I liked Val Kilmer a whole lot. Like you remember the saint, <laughs> like the saint, the saint. <laughs> yes. But there, uh, what Heat was he in Heat? Yes, he was. Yeah, you're darn right. He was. He was also in MacGruber. Yes, Val that's Kilmer right. was a yeah. bigger version of Val <laughs> Kilmer was in MacGruber. You may not have recognized him. Yeah, he didn't have the the boyish young. Charming it was the Val looks. Kilmer wearing so a Val Kilmer it, suit. A, a Saint sequel's not in the words? No. It could be. Although you didn't even name his best tombstone. Oh, yeah. It's clearly yeah, right. the peak Val he, Kilmer. He's had too many huckleberries now? Yeah. Is that what you, uh, yes. I'll okay. eat your huckleberries. <laughs> oh, this, is not, this is not okay. Uh, no, it's clearly Ben Affleck. It's the, it's the answer. I, wait, he... He was Batman. As Batman. Yeah, yeah he no, was. it's weird to think because I you don't even, even include him. I haven't even seen him. He's coming out with a new like sports movie. You see that? Like he's the head coach not. of a. Of, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's yeah. the new the new Batman? Pattinson. Yeah, Robert Pattinson. Oh, I like him. He's yeah. gonna be the most handsome Batman. Christian Bale disagrees. Oh, give me a break. Get Christian, out of here, Christian, Christian. Christian Bale is a natural George, treasure. George, Jason. George Clooney disagrees. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's okay, a great that's, point. That's a real solid point. But. <laughs> All right, Dynasty question from Ace FF Jam on Twitter. Aaron Rodgers or Sam Darnold in a Dynasty League? Wow. Holy moly. That's a that's, gross uh, question. Give me Aaron Rodgers. It's, yeah. Oh. Yes, give me two, yes, give me two years Rogers. of Aaron Rodgers. It is Aaron Rodgers, but it's not an absurd question. It's going to be Aaron Rodgers, but it's gross that that's okay to is, ask. Okay, so your confidence that Aaron Rodgers is actually still Aaron Rodgers for fantasy next year. Wait, so I think that I'm not talking, what was he this past year? Was he Aaron Rodgers this no, past no, year? No, certainly no, certainly not. If you, you drafted and played Aaron Rodgers every week, you were not in the playoffs. You were certainly happier than if you had drafted and started Sam Darnold every well, week. Well, he didn't that play. Is true. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah he, he was smooching. He sure did. He, Sam Darnold played a large part of the season. But uh, so he missed the beginning of it. Yeah. yeah my, so I mean, the answer is Aaron Rodgers, and I think that Aaron Rodgers will continue to have big games in a dynasty league. You you're not streaming off of the waivers. All the quarterbacks are owned, so you want a guy who can have the ceilings that Aaron Rodgers provides. But he's not a plug and play week in week out starter. He's four thousand yards and twenty six touchdowns. That's yeah, what Aaron Rodgers did. That's good if you take the name out. Good, not great. Right. It's bad if it's Aaron Rodgers. We, Last yeah, year, there's two debates. We've talked about Aaron Rodgers in totality, but this is a head-to-head. -head. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I switched the conversation over because I, I, it's Aaron Rodgers because Darnold is entrapped by Adam Gaze. But Aaron Rodgers, four thousand yards, twenty-six touchdowns. The previous year, forty-four hundred yards, twenty-five touchdowns. The year before that, he was hurt, only played seven games. It, like it's been since two thousand sixteen. That you were happy you had Aaron Rodgers as your fantasy quarterback. So, so let me ask you this then: Is it better to say that you have a backup quarter? Like, if you're viewing him as a backup quarterback, is your QB two? You mean sure? Okay. In a dynasty league, then is the argument for Darnold that you just have a backup quarterback for many, many, many more years? No, I don't think so. Because when you have a backup in dynasty, it's it's not like a, a safety net in case of injury you're going to be playing your quarterback two in dynasty unless you have a season like Lamar Jackson gave you where week in and week out you're playing them um you're you're going to be playing your quarterback two maybe even your quarterback three I want the higher end game it's it's, it's that for, for the argument for Darnold is that he's young and do you think he can emerge and become one of these like a top 12 yeah, so fantasy quarterback. You, you just said, well, what was Aaron Rodgers, 4,026? Yeah. So Sam Darnold's 16-game pace was 3,700 yards and 23 touchdowns. Right. So, so he's not off. that far. Now, granted, the interceptions are widely different. Um, but, yeah, the issue is, okay, two years from now, is it out of the realm of possibility that Sam Darnold is much more valuable than Aaron Rodgers in two seasons? And that's that's not out of the question. It's way too young. I, like Darnold at 22, I'm not willing to say he's destined to an Andy Dalton career or something of that nature. It's just not enough of a sample size. And it's, Adam Gates. It's just an interesting yeah. question, though. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's Rogers, though. YouTube. Uh, someone on from the YouTube community sent this one in. Andrew Nelson, Joe Mixon, or Josh Jacobs. Oof. Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs. You guys, you guys know where I stand here. Yep. Yeah, you stand You're with Joe, Joe Mixon. Mixon. 
So both of these guys, stupidly and surprisingly, were not involved in the receiving game this this past season. Both of these guys have incredible receiving ability. Like Josh Jacobs, great pass catcher. Joe Mixon, great pass catcher. Probably better pass catcher. N yes. Than Jacobs. Um, but neither one really utilized this last season. I think going forward, there's a better chance now that they've re-signed Jalen Richard to a you know to a to a new contract. Right. I think there's a better chance that Joe Mixon gets more involved in the passing game than Josh Jacobs. He went from 43 receptions in just 13 games started in 2018 to 35, 35. last year. I mean, th like 35 is that's like that's that's the Eddie Lacy number. That that's where I always compare it to. Like they're not a focal point of of the of the passing game. He has the chops. They're just what Jason's saying is Joe Mixon should be a 60 plus reception guy. They just aren't using him that way. Same yeah. with Jacobs though. Yes, I agree. I, I, I think it's more likely that we see Mixon become that. Uh, I guess I lean, I lean Mixon right now, but I'm. Do you it's know just how, one foot. Do you just know how one foot old over. Joe Mixon is. I'm gonna guess twenty five. Like, I'm gonna go twenty four. I would have guessed twenty five, and I'm usually really good with ages. That's true. Uh, he's twenty three. Holy crap! Yeah, no, he's he's. he's When's he twenty four? July twenty fourth. Okay, so he'll be twenty four this year. Yes. It's my Valentine right there. It is. All right, Instagram question. Where do you draft Tyler Higby next year? He signed a four-year contract extension in September. Everett's contract uh, is through 2020. Higby is so interesting, man. Do you believe that it was a real small sample size, but they completely changed the offense for those, what was it, four or five games? Five games. Five games at the end of the year. And it wasn't just that Higby went off, and, and he was incredible for fantasy football. He was a production monster at the tight end position. Like, the team was better. Jared Goff was way better. Todd Gurley in the running game was better when they made this switch. So that has me leaning to that Tyler Higby could be the real deal. Now, where would you draft him? Like, where would I bet on that? It's not. It's still not until it's double digit the, rounds. The late. Well, like I'm fine if you want to take him in like the eighth or round or something. I just won't pay the middle round price for him. I don't think you're going to need to pay a middle round price. I don't think you're going to need to pay an eighth or ninth. By the time the season rolls around, there's going to be uh, question marks surrounding Tyler Higby. There's going to be question marks of was that the real deal? Everett's still involved. Uh, you know. The, they've improved their offensive line, yada, yada, yada. There's going to be a million questions. And there's all these other guys that I think will have more excitement and more surety. You know, the the Jared Cooks of the world will all go ahead Cook, of the but questionable. Cook, Cook will be like a fourth or fifth round guy. He'll be, you know, we always have the top the top tier guys. You have, it'll be Kelsey, George Kittle, and Ertz will probably be in there. They'll, they'll be in the second and the third round. Then you have that, Next tier of tight ends who start going to the fifth round. Last year it was Ingram, OJ well, Howard, and Joku. Like I, I think that Jared Cook will be in that tier of guys. I you're gonna have to pay up if you want him. I will not be in on Higby. Okay, he is not the kind of physical specimen that will demand the ball the way Kelsey Kittle, even a player like Waller, might demand the ball. He's on a team that has weapons that it look, if you run the offense through Higby, he was productive. But he's been a member of this team for quite some time, not having the offense run through him. And yes, maybe the team had some better games. They still didn't make the playoffs in that stretch. They still lost important games in that stretch. Higby is not the kind of player that demands you to run the offense through him. And anytime you're a part of an offense where you could be the fifth option on any given week because you don't demand the ball, Cooks, Woods, Cup, sure. Gurley, I there all, is not going to be enough hype for me to justify the the investment. All of those outside reasons, of the top 11, 12 rounds. All of those reasons you just laid out is why Higby will one hundred percent be in double digit rounds. His average draft position will not creep into the ninth. He'll be a tenth or later guy, and I will take a shot on him if he is that late. Okay, because it it costs me nothing, you know, and and I'm usually one of those guys that I'm either taking the Kelsey or Kittle early so that I've locked it up or I'm going to wait for the shot late because I feel like those mid-round those mid-range guys 
uh, I mean, you just brought it up, right? O.J. Howard, Evan Ingram, those mid-range guys is last yeah, year. And they almost <laughs> always They didn't pan bust. out. Yeah. Does it concern you that you saw the transition from, like, Everett looked like he was going to be a reliable tight end option, and then poof, he was gone. He looked like he could be emerging, but he didn't put anything together like Tyler Higby did. It, it, and I don't know. I, I'm just it, the question to me becomes: Is he worth the late round shot? And I think he is. Sure, he'll well, be one. Of, he'll be one of my favorite late round tight ends. If he somehow yeah. is going in the double digits, then I'm then I'll be real excited. Because if they do to take the shot, what they did last year, it's like drafting Mark Andrews last year. You're like, sure. You're like, I've seen what he can become. Love the contract. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not going away. And and look at what I mean. It wasn't it wasn't just oh they started going to him more. It was he was on the field more. Right. They said he is now a well. Everett was injured though for some of it, not for all of it. Well, just Everett at the got very back. end, he came back. Yeah, Everett got back at the end, and it, you know if you look at the the snap percentages for Higby, he, here's the beginning of the year: fifty one percent, thirty four percent, forty four percent. 56, 58. It stays like that the whole year until the last five weeks. 91, 97, 85, 89, 96%. He became uh, a one of the cogs, one of the core pieces of the offense. If he ends up next year being on the field 90 plus percent, I think he's going to be great for fantasy. That's the question that we're asking is, will he be uh, pretty much every down player or not? That's and, the, it, It's interesting because he's been in the league for four years. Yeah. So it, I think he will be one of the more interesting late round i mean your your consequence for being wrong if he's in the double digit rounds is not great so he's he's a player that has shown you upside but probably won't cost you a lot like jason was saying so why not take the shot yeah he's the mark andrews darren waller type from this past year yeah it'd be nice to see them go back to that fourth round pick four years in the league has the better contract situation obviously than gerald everett does everett is on his way out right YouTube question, Jeff, Jarrett, my how many bench Jared. spots are too many? Hmm. How many bench spots are too many? Well, that's going to depend on your league type. Obviously, a dynasty. Uh, versus, let's go to, go to redraft. Okay. Yeah. Redraft, too many is seven. Okay. I'm happy with five or six. Does assuming it, a 12, you know, a, a 12 team league. Yeah, you basically want a situation where. Your waiver wire is not bare, but your waiver wire is also not, you know, filled with uh, top tier options. You know, you need that balance where you're, um, you know, people aren't able to hold players indefinitely and not make decisions. So I like five or six. I would say. Yeah, I would. I would say six, but I also like a, a starting roster of either an extra flex or an extra super flex. So you need more players. Yes, two flex. As a six bench is really nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, question from Mike Luther on Facebook. Dynasty question. Who flew under the radar that you think will make a leap this year? Is it someone like Nikhil Harry or Hunter Renfro, whose uh, face popped into my head when I started picturing Tom Brady in a Raiders uniform? You know, Hunter right. Renfro for a couple of years there potentially. This is specific for Dynasty? Yes. I mean, we've talked about Devin Singletary ad nauseum. He's uh, not completely under the radar, but I still think he's a little he's blipping on the radar. Yeah, he's on the outskirts. Um, if you want to go super deep, like an Akil Harry, someone that lost their first season, I still think Andy Isabella has a chance. Sure, never got on the field, which was extremely disappointing. But when he did get on the field, all oh, those jet sweeps, yeah, little, those jet sweeps were awesome. Behold, um. Would you consider Hollywood Brown under the radar right now? He, I, he's someone that I don't think has peaked value wise. So, uh, a little bit. Is Terry McLaurin under the radar? No, definitely not. I mean, I those, don't think he's under the radar. So I think at both all. those guys, uh, Hollywood Brown and Terry McLaurin, I think both players are not under the radar. But both players, I think you can get cheaper than what their actual value will be. So I would throw out. Under the radar at, at the tight end position, Jay Sternberger for Green Bay. Yes, I bet you it. can still get him pretty cheap. Irv Smith for Minnesota. I mean, that's I think he's even he probably even a deeper stash than Jay Sternberger because Kyle Rudolph is is still in town. But Irv Smith did flash a little bit when he was on the field. Diggs was traded. 
Yeah, yeah, there you go. If Diggs is traded, then uh, then what? BC becomes interesting as well. Uh, Darius Slayton. Breaking oh, news. Oh, like Stephon Diggs just traded? Oh, did he get traded? Nope. Jordan Reed is now out of the concussion <laughs> protocol. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. Oh, my goodness. He Are was you? in the protocol for six months after suffering the hit in preseason. His release is also imminent. Yeah. Please, nobody resign him. They probably, oh, man. 29 years old. They probably have if to he wants get to, him out. If he wants to play, he will have somebody give him the opportunity to play. Yeah, someone will give him a shot because he's a great player. But I don't I, – so I'm just – this is just a hypothesis because I don't know exactly how it works. But I'm curious if they have to get him out of the concussion protocol before they can cut him or then you have like – Yeah, you're fine. See you later. Well, um, is there injury severance pay that that becomes a factor? It's a good question, but I, just insane timing on yes. that breaking that in the middle of the wild. show. We talked about it. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for their support of the podcast. And Austin Eckler signed Chargers logo football yesterday sold for $53.35. Stop disrespecting Austin Eckler. That is a bargain. And you can get hundreds of daily bargains on autograph sports memorabilia at pristineauction.com. And here's the key. When you go, use the registration code BALLERS and you will get a $10 credit. We asked them to bump it up and they said, sure. no. They said, no. <laughs> oh. And we said, bump it up. And they said, all right. Yeah. And then <laughs> For they, you, they're giving you a $10 credit if you use that code. And um, if you sign up, obviously no obligation to bid on anything. You can just browse the auctions, pristineauction.com to check that out. Thank you for listening, tuning in. It's been a fun episode, and we'll be back next week. We have some free agency wishing well to do. Mm. Very excited about that. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.